Hi, this is Randy Nordell. Uh, welcome to episode four of the SimNet Instructor videos. And this video is on SimNet projects. So SimNet projects are those auto graded projects in SimNet that you can assign to your students. Now these projects, they're available in the content area. So I'm gonna open up content, click on projects. And that's going to take me to the projects area. I can, like we've done with others with SimBooks, I could select the textbook that we're going to use for, for this one, which is the in, in practice Excel 365 2021. And then it's going to list all the projects that are available in here. And there are three per chapter. There's a guided project, an independent project and an advanced project in every chapter. Now, um, these increase in level of difficulty. So the guided projects are very hand-holding, formative in nature, very detailed instructions telling students what to do, how to do it, a lot of screenshots. So, so very formative in nature. Independent projects pull back the instructional scaffolding a little bit and shows, tell students what to do, but not specifically how to do it. Fewer screenshots, um, not as detailed instructions, advanced projects even more so. So basically, uh, kind of following the philosophy and the pedagogy of our book is taking things from low stakes to a little bit higher to a little bit higher to, to promote uh, transferability of skills, being able to take the skills learned in one context and transfer them to another context. So three different levels of projects. These projects actually come from the textbook or the sim book. They're available. Let me show you real quickly how these projects come about because the numbering may be a little confusing here. So I'm going to open up the sim book and this is the table of contents for chapter one here. At the end of the chapter, we have 10 different end of chapter projects. We have three guided projects. We have three independent projects, one advanced project, and three challenge projects. And so our, the SimNet projects come from these. We take the ones that are that work the best in the auto grader, that are the most robust in skills and SLOs to use in SimNet. So guided project one, three here, that's what's in, that's the this project in SimNet. Independent project one, four, that's what's in there. So the numbering is just consecutive here. So the one is the chapter number, and then the second number is just the project number, one through 10. And that's common for each one. So if you see these number, the second number, if it seems a little confusing, it's because we're just taking a few projects out of the sim book. So additionally, you have these other projects, the ones that are not auto graded in SimNet that are not SimNet projects, you have additional projects. If you wanted to use some of these for demo projects in your class, for extra projects for your students, for a, an assigned project that you're going to hand grade, you can use those as well. In another episode, we will talk about pause and practice projects, which are within the chapter in the Sim book and how to assign those. Um, additionally, for the um, for these SimNet projects is there are Mac instructions for all of these as well. So Mac instructions are available except for access, which there is no access in Mac. And with the exception of a couple of the advanced level Excel projects that are Windows only because the features covered in these projects um, are only available in the Windows version of Excel. So hopefully in the future, we'll be able to make those Mac as well with as Mac gets more robust in Excel features. Um, finally, about about the SimNet projects, there are capstone projects available as well. So you can assign capstone projects, which are those projects that cover multiple chapters. We do have a handout that shows how our capstone projects align to the chapters in the book and the, and the different, uh, different applications. We have both application capstone projects, which are per application, and we also have um, integrated app, uh, capstone projects. Um, there's some outside of SimNet and some inside of SimNet. So some are auto graded and some are not, but these are available right here. So let's uh, let's go ahead and go on and I'll show you how to add, con add these projects into SimNet and customize the settings. So like we have done with others is we're going to go to our course and click on the edit assign button. 
You could also go to view all, select your course, again, let working left to right, um, select your course, go to the actions menu on the right and choose edit assign. But by starting your course, you can get to it or uh, more quickly. So I'm gonna click edit assign in this course. And in the last episode, when we talked about sim books, we added sim books into this course here. So I can click on the sim books tab and see that those are added to the course. And remember, um, the left-hand container is what's available in SimNet. The right-hand container is what's assigned. So we're going to go to projects and we're going to assign some projects in SimNet here. Choose your textbook. There's a drop-down list here to choose. So I'm going to choose Excel and I'm going to assign the first four chapters and a capstone project here. So I'm going to go chapters, chapters one through four, hold down the shift key to select a range and I'm going to do all of those and, and a capstone project. And as we assign these, similar to with the um, SIM books, the assignment details dialog box opens up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and deselect the enable schedule by dates. This is something you can come back to later and batch edit these dates. Once your syllabus is all done, go back in and put them in. And I'm gonna have a tutorial video that shows you a couple different ways to, to both batch edit dates and individually edit dates. So kind of best practices on how to do that. The assignment preferences, the second part here is the attempts. Okay, so the, these are all the different settings that we have available in, in this. Now, I don't know that I've mentioned in the other videos, but if ever you're unsure what any of these things mean as far as allow integrity violations or anything, there's a contextual help menu right here. So use that, if, especially as you get into exams and, and other, other assigning different types of SimNet assignments. If you're ever unsure, use the help menu because it's contextual based on where you're at in SimNet. So let me go through here. The way I set things up, I tend to do three, three attempts per assignment. Um, I don't use the timer. You can enable a timer if you want, if you want to set a timer for it. Displaying visual feedback. The visual feedback is what the student sees and it shows them what's uh, correct and incorrect and partially correct. The display incorrect feedback. So this is the visual feedback. Incorrect feedback kind of tells them what they, what they did wrong and how to fix it. So what I tend to do is on, I give, them, I give them multiple attempts. On the easier projects, the guided projects, I tend to assign one guided and one either independent or advanced per chapter. You could sign all three, you can assign only one. I wouldn't recommend going from a sim book to like an independent or advanced. I think that's too big a jump for students. I think it's good to go from a sim book to a guided and then to an independent or advanced and then after that a capstone. But I tend to assign two per chapter and what I do is I on the first one the guided I display the incorrect feedback right away so that they see what they got wrong and how to fix it. When I do the uh, independent or advanced projects the harder ones I up this to the it only displays after their last attempt. So they see what they got wrong, they just don't see how to fix it. So by changing these settings, you can make the projects more difficult based on the feedback that they get and, and more reflective of their skills when they're taking these projects. So um, for now, I'll go ahead and set everything so this everything displays after the first attempt. I can go back in later and change those. Display solution file PDF. I like to have this displayed. All it is is a PDF of the solution file in both the assignment panel and the results page. The assignment panel is where the students go in to start the assignment. The results page is what displays after they have uploaded and graded their assignments. So I tend to turn both these on. The objectives, those are by default because I selected all of the in practice 2021 uh, projects. That's what displays uh, by, by default. This allow integrity violations. Okay, if you want each of these, each of the uh, projects are marked with a uh, key for each student so that it, it will flag for integrity. So the uh, SimNet will accept it from that student only um, for the integrity violation. So if you say allow 
and students with integrity violations, you're going to allow upload what well, plagiarized files to be uploaded. It will mark it on your dashboard and in your gradebook if there's a plagiarized file. Um, if you deselect this, then it blocks that. It does not allow students to upload plagiarized files or files that do not have their unique code, the, the start file that they in the start file that they downloaded and the solution file they're uploading. So I tend to block it, and they get a students get a message that says, "Hey, the file you're trying to upload um, does not contain your." unique signature. That's it. And they know if, if they're cheating, they know. So um, so anyway, you could do that either way. If it's checked, it allows plagiarized files to be uploaded. If it's deselected, it blocks it. Um, Gradebook options. Let's go down to here. So again, like I mentioned on the sim book, I tend to overwrite everything to 100 points. And you could use percentage or points. It really doesn't matter if it's 100. You could use whatever. If you wanted 10 points for a project, if you wanted guided projects to be worth 50 and independent and advanced to be worth 100, you could do that also. So you, you really can do however you want. I tend to use maximum, so the highest grade they get. You could also, I have colleagues that will also use um, uh, average so that if they kind of game the system and, and tank the first attempt just so they can get the feedback and then do better on the other ones. But um, you decide on that. You can always contact me if you ever want it, but I tend to use, I tend to use maximum. You can set a password or uh, restrict IP address also. So, those are the settings there. Again, always use your help menu. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and you'll see that those are added to the class now. I can edit any individual one. So if I decided, oh, the capstone here, I only wanna do two attempts, which is what I tend to do on that. I could do that and I can say, hey, only display this incorrect feedback after the last attempt and save it. And I can go back in and enter dates in later as well. Um, one last thing that I didn't mention, when you have when you do enable by dates, you can also set a uh, penalty, a late submission penalty for these. And it can be by assignment. So just total amount, which is what I do, 20 percent. I give them a week um, grace period. They lose they lose 20 percent, but they can turn it in up to a week late. You can have it by hour, by day. The late I, I tend to do assignment and 20 percent. Um, and you could go lowest possible grade. So, so anyway, know that that's available. You do have to put in the date in order to get that, um, to get that late assignment there. And you can go in and change those later as well. I'm going to save this. Um, finally, for the SimNet projects, I do have a tutorial video for students who are taking these. So I tend, I have the students watch this tutorial video. It's on my YouTube channel. You can find it or contact me or someone on the team. Um, I have students watch the tutorial video before they do the first SimNet assignment because it'll answer a lot of questions. It'll save you a lot of emails that students will email you. So assign the video, have them watch the video before they do the first SimNet project. Um, I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.